Hello, all of you amazing cancer survivors and caregivers. My name is Courtney McGowan. I'm Courtney Melcher. And I'm Molly Stryker. And we're the registered dietitians with Smilo Cancer Care Centers. We are all certified specialists in oncology nutrition and are honored to be with you today to discuss savvy shopping for survivors, eating healthy on a budget. Given the topic, we figured what better place to start this discussion than at the grocery store. Cancer survivorship focuses on the health and well-being of a person with cancer from the time of diagnosis through treatment and beyond. In the course of this video, we'll walk you through the main sections of the grocery store while talking about healthy eating for cancer survivors, including tips for budget-friendly selections as we go. Should we get started? Most grocery stores have you enter through the produce section, so let's start there. Welcome to the produce section. One thing we focus on for healthy eating and cancer survivorship is to include a wide variety of colors from your fruits and vegetables. Plant-based foods are rich in vitamins, minerals, and fiber and get their colors from something called phytonutrients. Eating a variety of phytonutrients gives our body the fuel it needs to fend off cancer and other diseases by strengthening our immune system, reducing inflammation, and strengthening our healthy cells. One look around the produce aisle and you can see all of the color options. When we think about making these choices on a budget, there are many strategies to use. First, shop for produce that's in season or on sale. Grocery stores typically do a great job labeling their sale items. And as I'm sure you're aware, there will be even more variety in the summer months to come. Farmers markets and CSAs, or Community Supported Agriculture, may be another option for good prices on in-season produce. You can also consider buying the foods in season and freezing them to eat throughout the year or plant your own garden at home, be it in the ground or in pots and containers on your patio. Another strategy to keep costs down is to choose from frozen, dried, or even canned options if uh, the variety of fresh choices are lacking or are too expensive. Just make sure that the canned or dried fruit are packaged in their own juice um, and without added sugar, which is clear on the label, it's well labeled in juice. Um, and choose canned and frozen vegetables packaged without added salt or sauces since these can often add unwanted sodium and fat. Frozen options can also offer a lot of color within that one bag, which is a nice variety. Also to keep costs down, know that the produce you buy does not need to be organic. The American Institute for Cancer Research's third expert report found little scientific evidence indicating that organic foods can lower cancer risk but there is a lot of evidence supporting the more general idea that eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables is beneficial, whether they're produced organically or conventionally. Bottom line, don't let higher prices or lower availability of organic foods keep you from reaping the benefits of high fruit and vegetable intake. Another point worth mentioning here is that these fruits and vegetables can be a significant source of fiber for your diet. While a high fiber diet is great for helping alleviate constipation and for many health concerns including heart disease, diabetes, and some cancers, a low fiber diet may be necessary in other cancer types after some surgeries or if you're experiencing diarrhea. If you've been told to follow a low fiber diet by a doctor or dietitian, it would be best to choose cooked and canned fruits and vegetables and avoiding gas forming choices such as cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts to name a few. I think that should cover it for our fruits and vegetables. Now let's move on to shopping for protein-rich foods. Hi, welcome to the seafood and meat department. Protein is an important part of your diet. Protein functions as building blocks for bone, muscle, cartilage, skin, and blood. In other words, your body uses protein for growth and repair. Protein is found in a wide range of foods, including from meat, poultry, seafood as well as from plant-based foods. The recommended amount of protein for the average adult is five to six servings or five to six ounces a day. A serving or, a serving or portion of meat, chicken, seafood is three ounces, which is about the size of a deck of cards. For cancer survivors and prevention, it is recommended to choose lean proteins, mostly from poultry, seafood, and plant-based sources. Now let's talk about a few of these examples and what that looks like. Salmon is a good source of omega-3 fatty acids. These are healthy fats that help with inflammation. Grilling, baking, or poaching your, using your favorite marinade or spices and herbs are great ways to cook salmon. Ground turkey can be used as an alternate, alternative to red meat in sauces, tacos, or as burgers. Also, chicken breasts 
and boneless, skinless chicken thighs can be baked or grilled. And to make a crispy chicken without added fat, you could use an air fryer to cook both. Eggs are another source of protein, and one egg eats one ounce of protein. Canned, packaged tuna, chicken, and salmon can be cost-effective and healthy alternatives to fresh and offer the same nutritional value. Just make sure to look for low-sodium or no-sodium options. Now let's talk about some plant-based proteins. Beans, either canned or dried, can be used in salads or as a side dish. A half a cup of beans can contain six to eight grams of protein per serving, depending on the type of bean. A serving of beans is a quarter of a cup. Here's a cost savings tip. Buy store brand canned beans. Store brands are usually cheaper than brand names. Store brands and private label brands are not manufactured by the stores that sell them. Most are made by the same large companies that produce leading name brands, and these companies sell them to the store at lower cost and allow stores to put their own labels on them. Another plant-based protein is tofu. A quarter of a cup of tofu equals one ounce or one serving. Nuts like walnuts, pecans, and almonds, along with seeds such as chia seeds, flax seeds, are good sources of protein and contain omega-3 fatty acids. Remember, these healthy fats help with inflammation. A serving of nuts and, and or seeds is a quarter of a cup and equals one ounce. And two tablespoons of nut butter is one ounce or one serving. Lastly, I do want to talk about red meat. Lean cuts of red meat and pork can be part of a healthy diet. The American Institute for Cancer Re Research recommendation for red meat, pork, and lamb is 12 to 18 ounces a week. Look for 93% lean hamburger, flank steak, top sirloin, and for pork, look for tenderloin, top loin roast, loin chops. These are all examples of lean protein. A cost saving tips for the meat and poultry is that you can buy larger packages of hamburger, which can be divided into halves or into thirds after buying and then frozen separately. And the same can be done for family packs of chicken, breasts, or thighs. Now let's go meet Molly in the grain aisle. Hi again, and welcome to the center aisles of the grocery store, where many of our grain foods are found. Whole grains and dietary fiber play a crucial role in protecting us against certain cancers, as well as weight gain, overweight, and obesity, which can all contribute to cancer risk. What are whole grains anyway? Whole grains contain the entire grain kernel, which is made up of three parts, the fiber-rich bran, the nutrient-packed germ, and the starchy endosperm. Whole grains are a good source of fiber, B vitamins, and phytonutrients. Examples of whole grains are brown rice, oats, quinoa, whole grain bread, and whole grain pasta, among other foods. Refined grains, such as white bread and white rice, have been processed to remove the fiber-rich bran and the nutrient-rich germ, leaving only the starchy endosperm. Refined grains were developed to give the products a finer texture and to improve the shelf life, but this processing removes many of the beneficial nutrients. Most refined grains are enriched with vitamins after processing, but they still lack the fiber, which is important for overall health and cancer prevention. So how do we determine if the product is a whole grain? The best way to determine if the product contains whole grains is to look at the ingredients list. The ingredients are listed in order by weight. Look for the products with whole grains listed as the first or second ingredient. Examples of whole grains that might be listed as the ingredient include whole wheat, whole rye, whole oats or oatmeal, brown rice, buckwheat, millet, popcorn, and quinoa. You can also use the Nutrition Facts panel to guide you in making healthy food choices in the grain aisle. Here's how. First, you wanna look at the servings per container and the serving size. That's because the information listed on the Nutrition Facts panel is based on one serving. Next, look at the calories and the nutrients listed below that. The percent daily value helps us over here on the right, helps us to, to determine whether a food is high or low in a nutrient. As a general rule, 20% or more of a nutrient is considered high and 5% or less of a nutrient is considered low. When shopping for grain products, choose those that are at least three grams of dietary fiber per serving. 
The American Institute for Cancer Research recommends that adults consume at least 30 grams of dietary fiber each day as part of a healthy eating pattern to lower cancer risk. You can also use these label reading skills to select healthier for you cereals and snacks. Those that have more than three grams of dietary fiber and zero added sugar are gonna be your best bet. Here's where you can find the added sugar on the label. A few examples of nutritious snacks are popcorn, whole grain crackers, maybe paired with hummus, corn tortilla chips with fresh tomato salsa, whole grain toast with either avocado or maybe nut butter, homemade energy bites with old fashioned oats, maybe a grain salad like tabbouleh. Sometimes whole grain products can be more expensive than refined grains, but there are some ways to overcome this. Here are a few cost saving tips to keep in mind while shopping. Consider purchasing grains in larger quantities. Unit pricing or cost per unit makes for easier price comparisons among similar products in different size containers. Here, come take a look. Here we have whole grain brown rice in two different size packages. The first one is one pound and it costs $1.69. The second package is five pounds and it costs $6.29. But if you notice the unit price, the five pound bag is $1.26 per pound, whereas the one pound bag is $1.69 per pound. So you would really benefit from buying a larger quantity of rice at a time. Also, store brand items are often cheaper than brand name products and can be just as nutritious. This is where that label reading can come very, become very handy. If there's a particularly good sale on bread or other grains, consider purchasing extra to freeze for later. Hopefully these tips give you the knowledge you need to make healthy, budget-friendly choices when shopping for grains, including bread, cereals, and snack foods. Now let's meet up with Courtney in the dairy section. So this brings us to the last section of the grocery store, the dairy department. We've talked with you today about ways to look for sale items and buy store brand products to keep costs down, and all of those tips apply to this section of the grocery store too. One thing to note about the dairy aisle is that many of the foods in this section of the store can provide good options when trying to manage side effects from your treatment. Sometimes when you're tired or not hungry, the more you have to chew, the less appealing a food is. When you have a dry mouth, sore mouth, or pain with swallowing, it's often easier to get calories and protein from soft, moist foods. And the dairy aisle offers many good options that fit this criteria, including yogurt, uh, cheeses, cottage cheese, ragot, and different types of milk, as well as kefir probiotic yogurt drink. If you're struggling to gain or maintain weight, choose the whole milk and full fat options of these to maximize calories per bite. Your appetite is good and you should be choosing the low fat or non fat option to keep calorie intake down. Now, I know Molly showed you how to find the amount of added sugar in the nutrition labels of grain products, and you can use that same thing here for the dairy aisle. When we look at different yogurts, for example, the type of sugar can vary. If we look at a plain yogurt, the added grams of sugar are zero. Whereas if we get a yogurt that has some sugar added, there's actually five grams of added sugars in this yogurt versus a regular sugar yogurt, which contains 14 grams of added sugars in just this one container. So you can use these label reading tips to make a good choice uh, when you're shopping for dairy products as well. Your best choice is going to be the one with the least amount of added sugar that you enjoy the taste of. And so maybe something to try is a plain yogurt where you add your own cinnamon and fruit, whether it's fresh fruit, uh, canned fruit, or frozen fruit, to help add a touch of sweetness to that plain yogurt and make it more enjoyable. And then one last thing to consider when you're shopping for dairy is that some people are lactose intolerant and find that cow's milk dairy products can cause or worsen diarrhea. If this sounds like you, consider trying lactose-free products where the lactose is already broken down. We have an example right here. So your body doesn't have to do the work. And with this option, you're able to still get the naturally occurring protein and calcium content that you find in cow's milk with the benefit of less diarrhea. 
There are also many lactose-free plant-based milk alternatives on the market, including oat milk, almond milk, coconut milk, but these products do not naturally contain the protein and calcium that cow's milk does. So when shopping for these foods, make sure that you're choosing the fortified options to increase their nutritional benefit. Well, that finishes our last section of the store. We hope that you'll be able to use these tips next time you find yourself in the dairy aisle at the grocery store. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. Remember that registered dietitians are part of your Smilo Care team. If you have any questions about general healthy eating or are having side effects from treatment and want to discuss ways to maximize your nutrition intake, please let your care team know that you would like to speak to a registered dietitian. Now we'll head over to our colleague Bridget's kitchen, where she'll show us how to prepare a healthy recipe and a low-cost, high-calorie, high-protein shake. Hi, my name is Bridget Komoski, and I'm a registered dietitian at Smilo Cancer Center at St. Francis. I'm honored to be a part of Cancer Survivorship Month and help you all with healthy food ideas and recipes and with this cooking demo. So today we're gonna make a summer veggie pasta salad um, and there's a bunch of different swaps that we can make too. So we'll talk about that as we go. And then the second recipe that we're gonna make is a fruit smoothie, which also has a bunch of different swaps that we can do and ideas that we can talk about. So let's get started. Okay, here we have our food ingredients for the pasta salad. A box of pasta, the recipe says half a box, um, but you could also do one box, that would be okay depending how much you want to make. Salt and pepper, um, dressing of choice. This is just an oil-based um, balsamic dressing. One can of black beans. And then here we have our, our veggies, veggie parts of the pasta dish. Um, four cups of arugula, one head of broccoli, a pint of grape tomatoes, some red onion um, with no measurement, just kind of for flavor, and a half a cup of black olives. Okay, so while we're waiting for the pasta to cook, um, I just boiled water, dropped the pasta in. Um, one note about the recipe is the broccoli I separated from the rest of the vegetables because just the last probably two minutes of the pasta cooking, we'll dump the, the broccoli in there, let it go for two minutes so it cooks it, and then drop it all together in the, the colander so then you cook the pasta done at the same time and the broccoli, so that's the only the only difference, everything else is um, separate and in this bowl. So while we're waiting for the pasta to cook, um, I wanna talk about the recipe um, and how it relates to cancer survivorship. So these recipes, um, the pasta salad and the smoothie that we'll make later are, are helpful for individuals from the time of diagnosis, um, through treatment and after treatment. So very helpful, there's a lot of swaps that you can make in terms of foods that we'll get into. So in terms of when someone has maybe poor taste or off taste, um, vinegar-based things can really help. So that balsamic vinegar dressing and Italian dressing used in the pasta salad, even just some sort of marinade that would go well with a, a pasta dish um, would, would really work. Um, anything, again, vinegar, vinegar-based. So that's a nice option for anything that if food is not tasting as good as it used to. A lot of times um, meat can be off-putting um, a lot of patients have expressed that um, it can have like more of a waxy mouth feel um, and again then kind of people veering away from from meat for that reason um, there's lots of plant proteins for example the black beans that are in this dish um, you could also do chickpeas you could do lentils you could do another type of bean so by no means you have to do black beans but sometimes again in the if meat is not tasting great you have a lot of plant protein options. Also nuts, seeds, you could do tofu, um, quinoa. Again, really uh, plant protein forward, which is nice. Um, and if you are, are um, eating chicken or, or beef, I mean, you could put anything in a, in a pasta salad. So uh, some shrimp, chunks of chicken. So again, really good protein source that way. And you have all those plant protein options too to mix in. And you can even do both. Moving on, there could be some GI upset with, with active treatment. So diarrhea, constipation, kind of oscillating between the two um, and trying to like pick your battles when you're dealing with each one. In terms of constipation, this can be really, really helpful. Um, broccoli, dark green leafy vegetables. So like that arugula, 
spinach, kale, you could use any of those in here. Again, the broccoli, um, you could also go the route of a whole wheat pasta with the pasta salad, uh, which would give you more fiber to help with that. Um, and again, if you added those seeds and nuts, um, that would also give you fiber and, and help in that constipation piece. So anything like that um, kind of would be completely appropriate. So lots of options to help. Okay, so now we're adding um, just the broccoli in the last two-ish minutes of the pasta cooking. So literally just adding it right in, into the boiling water with the almost cooked pasta. Um, just mix it around and then just let it boil for another two minutes and that will cook cook the broccoli make it soft um, so let it sit for another two minutes and then just drain it all together okay so we talked about um, a little bit about active treatment and how this dish might help uh, with some active treatment symptoms in terms of non-active treatment um, on the survivorship continuum um, this is also a great a great option because it's protein packed um, especially with those black beans or if you swapped or you added chickpeas too or you even put some pieces of chicken or shrimp or cheese you can really get a good source of protein um, and you can get a ton a ton of fiber so the whole wheat pasta if you chose that um, all the vegetables that are in here lots of fiber lots of phytonutrients that are cancer fighting and help protect against certain cancers um, this dish can also be allergy friendly, so it can be gluten free, made with gluten free pasta. You could not use cheese if it needs to be dairy free. Um, lots of lots of different options to, to do do that with, and then real um, also it can be very plant protein based. So there's just tons of, of options for the, those beans, those chickpeas, those lentils, um, which has been shown a plant protein diet has really been shown to help protect against certain types of cancers um, and limiting some of our meat consumption. And, and the dish is just very versatile. You can use frozen veggies that you have, any veggies that are about to kind of go bad in the fridge that you need to use up, you can put any and all in a pasta salad. So that's kind of nice just so you don't feel like you're reinventing the wheel um, heading to, heading to the, the grocery store. Okay, so here we have our end result. It was um, just all the veggies in here with the one cup of dressing, and then I rinsed and drained, or rinsed and drained the uh, pasta with the broccoli that we put in towards the end of the boiling, and it's all in here. So it does. It's very hot right now. Um, so what I would do is, you know, put it in the fridge for an hour or so um, before serving, or just you know, can stay in the fridge up until up until you serve it. So. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed that recipe and that it, that it will be useful for you. And um, the next recipe that we're going to do is a fruit smoothie. So for our second recipe, we're going to do a fruit smoothie, um, which also has a lot of different swaps, food swaps that we can make that we'll talk about, just like the pasta salad did. And it also has a lot of... Um, it's relevant to cancer survivorship, um, which we'll talk about as well. For ingredients, for this particular one we're gonna make, we just have vanilla yogurt, um, some flaxseed, um, blueberries are in here, frozen blueberries, frozen raspberries, and then I have just two different types of peanut butter just to, to give it some, uh, some more grams of fat, uh, especially if you're using a non-fat yogurt, then you can get some fats from here and from the flaxseed. Um, so that's the smoothie that we're going to make and then later we'll talk about different swaps that can be done um, for your own personal needs. So the beauty of a smoothie, what we'll talk about now, are all just a ton of different alternatives that you can use. Um, so we'll start with the base the in place of the yogurt. So you can use an allergy friendly yogurt like an almond milk or um, a coconut milk yogurt. If someone is dairy free, you can just use any flavor yogurt, vanilla, strawberry. Um, kind of the best nutrition wise would be a plain unsweetened yogurt. Um, a Greek yogurt would have more protein as compared to a regular yogurt and unsweetened is usually definitely the way to go, less added sugar, and then you can do ingredients to kind of sweeten it up and, and add flavor. Um, you could also not use yogurt at all, and your base could be milk, almond milk, 
um, something along those lines. So it would definitely be a little more liquidy um, and you could add ice, ice to make it more of a, of a smoothie, but you don't have to use yogurt if you don't like that. Um, also for a base in terms of getting extra calories, um, if that is something that, that you need, um, is ice cream. Um, or frozen yogurt that would pack a lot more calories into into the smoothie. Um, other swaps that could be could be used are the veggies and fruits. So we use fruits in this smoothie. You could really do any fruit or veggie, um, frozen, not frozen. The options are are endless. So any of those options are are great. So it kind of makes it fun. You can just do a bunch of different different fruits and veggies, whatever you like. Um, and then I like to think of other things as like the toppings. So you could do little additions like coconut flakes, coconut oil if you needed more calories in your smoothie, um, flaxseed, chocolate chips, chia seeds, nuts and seeds. You can blend all that together into a smoothie if you wanted, you know, some different flavors. It might have a different texture if you blend in nuts or something, but um, can, can be kind of fun. Um, almond butter, peanut butter cashew butter, sunflower seed butter, any of that kind of um, those toppings or those spreads um, are great options. Um, yeah, so you can get really super creative. All right, so now we're going to talk about um, how a smoothie can assist people on the um, cancer survivorship continuum. So for an active treatment, a smoothie um, recipe can be super helpful because it can kind of tackle a lot of different symptoms that come up. Um, first being possible loss of appetite, um, just foods not seeming as appetizing as usual. Um, sometimes drinking something can be helpful, um, easier and more appetizing. Um, another symptom that a smoothie can assist with is loss of taste or taste change. Um, very tart fruit can bring out flavors, so you could use cranberries, anything that's like pretty acidic. Um, cranberries, even strawberries, I guess, are, are you know are kind of tart, um, and you can use that in your smoothie to really bring out a, some sort of a taste. Um, also, just frozen fruit in general, since it most of it is kind of tart, um, can help with with um, loss of taste or taste change or um, things tasting off. So again, smoothie, nice option for that. Um, with treat treatment, things might taste bitter, acidic, metallic. Um, a smoothie can possibly help with that. You could use things like cantaloupe, watermelon, might come, um, kind of tackle those, those um, mouth tastes. Um, also mint and basil, so you could even do like a watermelon um, basil smoothie, which is kind of something that does go together. So using, again, cantaloupe, watermelon, mint, or basil can help with like things tasting very acidic and metallic. If someone was struggling with constipation, they could throw a lot of berries in their smoothie. So strawberries, blackberries, blueberries really help in that respect. You could put some flaxseed in there, apple or pear. So th those types of fiber, you know, would help with the constipation. If someone was struggling with diarrhea on their treatment, they could use more bananas, mangoes, that those aren't going to provide such an effect that would help with constipation. Um, you might want to stick more with like using the bananas and mango. So you can use, again, different options. Um, and again, even with dark leafy greens, you get a lot of fiber with that. So um, if an individual was constipated, they could throw some spinach or kale in their smoothie, which would definitely change the color and the taste, but kind of interesting to try. Also, what's nice about a smoothie is it requires kind of no cooking. It doesn't really smell. So sometimes, um, strong aromas that might come from cooking, especially hot foods, um, could be bothersome. So this requires technically no cooking and not really any smells. So that's kind of nice. With some treatment regimens, there can be a cold intolerance where the individual would need to consume food and fluid at room temperature. Um, so we would think a smoothie is not the best for that, of course, right out of the, the blender with the ice or out of the fridge, but you could let it come to room temperature and it would still taste, taste fine. You might need to use a spoon to kind of just mix it up. Once it's at room temperature, you could just not use frozen fruit, just use fresh fruit. Yogurt kind of gets to room temperature pretty quickly um, and that would be safe to use. With lots of options that this smoothie can, can help during active treatment and it can be a nice option.
Um, and again, remember you can really doctor up a smoothie to be pretty high calorie, really energy dense, lots of protein um, in order to, to even almost meet your needs through through fluids for, for a short period of time, hopefully, and, until maybe appetite comes back and you might be, you know, someone's able to eat, you know, increase their solid food intake. And then non-active treatment on the survivorship continuum, a smoothie can definitely still be useful. Um, it's protein packed and you get your fruits and veggies in, um, micronutrients like those vitamins and minerals and fiber just for good GI health. Um, and again, kind of cancer fighting fruits and vegetables. Um, you can get omega-3s from the flaxseed and, and healthy fats. So you're just kind of overall choosing that healthy lifestyle on that survivorship continuum. So useful for, for um, non-active treatment as well. In terms of closing remarks, um, again, this was really fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And just a few um, points to, to leave you with. Um, you know, food and cooking is flexible. If some of these recipes did not speak to you and, and or you just aren't, weren't into the ingredients, it can be 100% flexible, flexible. You by no means have to have these recipes. There's ways you can tweak them and, and um, you know, to meet your own personal needs. And what I want to stress is that there are dietitians at Smilo Cancer Center. Um, we are here for you and please ask your treatment team or, or your nurse that you're assigned to um, and we, we can meet with you and, and have that consult. Thank so. you so much for, uh, for listening and joining in and have a great night.